What's going on, family? It is I, it is me, Brother DSP, your friendly neighborhood media personality, and you're now tapped into another installment of The Journey. This time, we got the legendary Larry Abney. Of course, before we get with uh, Larry, I got the greatest co-host in the world. That's me. Bravo in the building. That's, That's me. You know what, what it do, what it do, what it do. It's only right. But as y'all can see, this is probably episode five, Bravo? I believe so. Episode uh, episode five or six. I'm not sure. Yeah, yet. no, we're, but, um, we're we, there. We yeah, have some great stories. But this story right here, classic. You know what I mean? <laughs> this story right here is a classic. Of course, I'm going to let the man tell it himself. First and foremost, though, Larry, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. That's, that's big time, man. I was just telling... I was just telling D why you was gone, Bravo. That uh, I see you guys doing big things. Got the league, got the podcast, man. Appreciate it, man. I see it, and I appreciate it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, man, for sure. Anything for sure. to anything to put Rockland on the map. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. You know, that's a fact, man. Yeah. Speaking of which, putting Rockland on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Larry Abbey. First, wait, first before we we get to that. I was about to say, because I got something to say, too. Go ahead. Quick, 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 quick question, and then my brother, you can go next. You know what I'm going to bring up as the gamer. Come on now. How? how, how Hold on. I got to find it. How did the name Birdman come about? Oh, that's because, crazy. like, that right now, that's crazy. Because when I saw that, I was like, wait, they called him Birdman back then? That's yeah. crazy. So let, let me know the story behind that. Man, that's, uh, that's actually pretty late into the game, man. I was uh, in Australia. And, oh, okay. Uh, I've had a I had a few nicknames before then, but I got to Australia, and uh, the dude I don't know what he was calling me. They, they had the announcer doing the games, doing the home games, and he called me something crazy. I, I don't know what it was, man. And I went up to him during one of the timeouts. I was like, "Yo, what you calling me? Like, what what, what is that?" He's like, "Oh no, man, it's a it's a good thing." And I'm like, "Man, don't call me that. I don't even know what it was." Well, right. and, man, well, it was one of my first or second game. And he was like, "Well, what what can you do?" I was like, I could fly. <laughs> right, right, right. He's like, all right, all right, mate. And so I came down probably the next play, and I put it on to my head. I dunked it on. I right, turned right. it to the crowd and went like this. Uh-huh. They called me Birdman. And then okay. the whole Australia started calling me Birdman. Okay. So, okay, that's, right. that's fine. That's, that's a fine. fire nickname. All right, so you can see behind me, I'm, a, I'm big in gaming. Me and the big bro always been big in gaming. One all thing right. we always been big in is sports gaming. Uh-huh. I just want to I just wanna let you you know back in the day when you was playing for fresno state yeah we ran with fresno state as a dynasty and yep. none other than this game right here oh, okay man. march madness 98 yes, so i have a copy i have a copy <laughs> in a playstation here so whenever i feel like it i could throw in the bulldogs and and, and get my run on i remember wow. if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken big bro hey listen my memory is vivid it was you. I was the I was the recruiter, right? I was the man yep. in the, getting the college players for the future. It was yep. you and another and one of your good friends. Then I think he missed the shot, and you was using Larry, and you made the game win the and layup. I made the put back. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it's That's just crazy. Fact. That was in ninety seven. Ninety seven. Here we nice. are in two thousand twenty three. We having a convo with you. We're actually I just had to bring that to up. the brother. It's, so crazy. It's, it's fire. It's fire. I just had to bring that <laughs> up. Many old nighters playing with myself. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course, I'm sure you were dropping forty with yourself on them joints. Give me right. the ball. Get out, Chris Herring. Get out the way. I got this. <laughs> Indeed. Right. Right. Indeed. Oh, oh, now, man. man uh, let's get into. The journey, Larry. Um, of course, this is where we like to let the uh, professional athlete tell their story. I mean, we like to start with the amateur career, pretty much whether it was starting at middle school or high school. It, we we pretty much leave it up to you. So please, please let them know, man, how it all began, bro. Yo, I can't really start that early, man. Like I actually started pretty late, man. I'm um, I, I was I was brought up in Spring Valley. I went to Kakiat Middle School. And- okay. Yeah, I was supposed to go to Ramapo. And um, I mean, back then I wasn't even hooping. I actually got cut from the ninth grade mm-hmm. team, but I was playing football. I came up playing football. Um, up okay. on New Avenue is where I'm from on the hill. And uh, Union Ave, Union Ave, yes, sir. Yeah. U Wing, U Wing. U Wing, oh, I used to Union, U Wing Ave. U Wing Ave, okay. Yeah. So I, uh, 
Um, I mean, I hooped in the in the park and, the, and with the, and my friends and stuff, but I had I never hooped under the whistle. Okay. Um, around this is like 91, 92, I got in big trouble in Khaki at it. Like big enough, you know, that's a whole different story, but big enough trouble to get me thrown out. Mm. So I was living with my grandmother at the time. My mom was living in Nyack, and uh, I ended up moving to Nyack that summer. And, uh, you know, I had been back and forth to Nyack a lot um, because my mom, my mom was over there. And so I had some friends over there, and I would hoop with them or whatever. So I went up to uh, Nyack High School, and I was hooping with uh, Marcus Jones and a bunch of these other dudes, Eugene, um, a whole bunch of guys from Nyack. Okay. Uh, Chester Phelps, um, and he took he took me up to uh, to like an open gym at Nike High School. Okay. And they had the JV and the varsity. All my friends was playing on the varsity side, so I was just playing with them. Okay. So I was over there, I'm hooping or whatever, and it was tryouts, and I didn't even know it. Like I just went to hoop. <laughs> and oh wow. Tryouts, and they brought me in. They brought me back. I ended up going to Nike High School, and uh, I played about three games on JV. Mind you, I'd never played. Uh, Basketball before. Yeah, right. I played three games for J- for JV. I, I got like I averaged like thirty, but I was like I was super raw, like just right, right, right. Run jumping, you know, right, what I mean? right, right. Pure um, athleticism, right there. Pure right. athleticism, like yeah. no know how whatsoever. But uh, after about three games, Gary Gray brought me up to varsity. Gary um, Gray, shout out to Gary Gray. Mm-hmm. And uh, on, I was I was a sophomore at that point, and at that time it was two other sophomores, Chester Phelps and Ronnie Myers. Mm. And uh, we went about 500 that year. Um, I'm just learning how to play, just learning how to play under a right. system. You know what I mean? And uh, but I loved playing. I loved I loved hooping. Like that's all I did with my free time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we would hoop and then go to the center up in Central Nyack and play some more. Go down to the Memorial okay. Park down in Nyack or Memorial South Nyack. Yeah, and, uh, just hoop. That's that's where you could find me. Just I had a ball. With me. Even when we went to the mall, this is when the Nanuet Mall was popping before. Palisades. Mm. For Palisades. He OG for real. Yeah, he said the man you at mall, man. Wow. When it was popping. <laughs> it was popping for real. So I'm dribbling yeah, running. Yeah, it was. I always had my ball with me. Even on the, on the block, wherever it was, where it was at, I had my ball with me. And uh, I mean, that's where it was born, really at the center, South Nyack Park and, and, and Central Nyack. And then that next year, my junior year, um, it was myself, Chester, and Ronnie Myers. It was our team. You know what okay. I mean? Um, we had a great, great supporting cast um, of, of other guys that were really good. And um, I don't want to start naming people because I know I'll leave somebody out. But, you know what I mean? It was All definitely right, right. And we ended up going undefeated throughout the whole season. We lost the last regular season game to Albertus Magnus. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. A private school up in uh, wherever they was. And uh, uh is that is that like New Bardonia? City, Bardonia, 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 like that, yeah, something they were. like that, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in that <laughs> section over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we lost. They had the Burts at the time. The DeBert brothers were really good. They had okay. Matt Gorman. You know what I mean? Uh, Matt Gorman really good, there. Uh, all those guys. So and we ended up losing to them. Um, that last regular season game, but then we went on and we ran through the the sectionals. We ended up beating a talented uh, Peace Skill and Elton Brand. Mm. You beat them. Oh wow. Yeah. Bravo. Remember, we used to we watch Peak Scale all game. the time. They were always on TV at that time. On public access. Yeah. Because of Elton yep. Brand. Yeah. Always yeah, on public yeah. access. Yep. Yeah, we, we beat them at the county center my junior year. Um nice. I got I think I got MVP of the, the game, the section or whatever. Uh yep. Chester Phelps who got MVP of the, the whole thing or whatever. Um nice. yeah, we just and then that next year, my senior year, we came back. And we went undefeated through the whole thing. And then we got upset by Poughkeepsie, who we had beat by 40 earlier in the year. Um, so mm. my junior senior year, we ended up going like like 45 and three. Wow. And that's crazy. Like, we just ran away with it. Um, I mean, I mean it was an amazing run, man, but it was it was it was incredible. It went so fast, like. We right. didn't know what we were doing. You know what I mean? Right. We were just hooping, having fun. You were in the and moment. During that time, I uh, I met a dude named Dan Berkowitz. Um, he was actually the 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 varsity coach at Knight High School right now uh, for football. Okay. And uh, he had no affiliation with nothing. He just used to uh, just love sports or whatever. 
And so he he met me one day this is after my sophomore year, like or in the summer, and uh, he ended up bringing me down to play for the Gaucho to try for the Gauchos. And that's when I started hooping down in the city. That's when I, you know, got the opportunity to play with Felipe Lopez, uh, Steph Marbury. Yep. Uh, exposure. Yep. Like the, the exposure was crazy. Like yeah. everybody on that team went like high D one. You're right. Um, oh yeah. Like everybody, including yep. myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think um, as far as D one goes, like you know, I, I'm pretty sure there were some other guys before me when D one that were kind of a lower like mid major, but. Uh, but Chester Phelps, myself, and Ronnie were the first three to go D1 out of nine at. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like TV type D1. Like, like high you know, major. High, high major. major. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then a, a, a slew of other people followed behind us. You know what I mean? Uh, Steve Canal and them going to Fordham after that. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, just that that entire, like, late 90s, mid 90s, late 90s was just just an awesome time, an awesome experience, man. And, Oh yeah. yeah, love to relive it. Love talking about it, man. Right, right, yeah. right. I, I loved being a spectator, watching you, right. <laughs> y'all go exactly. to work. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. My hoops, so, how, 90s I mean, hoops. How, how was um the NCAA D one run? Like, how was the transition? Because you said you were still raw. You were learning the game in high school. Yeah. So now to go to college D one, yeah. like, how I mean, was that transition? That was that was awesome, man. And, when I got there, when I started playing in the city, you know what I mean? Not to say, you know, Rockwell had some hoopers or whatever, but when I started playing in the city, it was another level because we traveled right. all over the country. Not over the right. country, we traveled internationally as well. I went to France with the Gauchos. Um, the first wow. time I ever got on an airplane, we went to Hawaii. That was my okay. first time in my life okay. in an airplane. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so playing in that environment, you know what I mean? Uh, Florida, Chicago, uh, uh, the Midwest, it prepared me. You know, I, I had seen a lot of these guys before. You know what I mean? Okay. And I knew uh, athletically and physically that I could compete. Um, but I'll tell you, when I got there that first summer, um, I showed up to Fresno State, and this is under Jerry Tarkanian. He had just left uh, UNLV. So UNLV, he let you know he won the championship in '90. Yeah. Year '91. Yep. So I graduated in '95. So what he had done with the running rebels was still fresh in my mind. I think I still had my UNLV jacket. Oh, nice. Right. The starter one? Was right. it started doing? You yes, either sir. had Georgetown, Syracuse, or UNLV. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's, That's right. A fact. That's a fact. <laughs> my UNLV jacket. And uh, I, I, to tell you the truth, I hadn't even aspired to to play for him, like, coming up in high school. Like, I I just was along for the ride. It wasn't like I grew up saying I'm going to play for Tart. It just kind of happened. Um, I actually verbal to go to Texas, to the University Ooh, of Texas. Okay. And uh, Tart sorry, had sorry to cut you off. Was that like a good visit that made you go verbal there, or? Yeah, it was. It was so I had this little thing in my head. Like I again, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, <laughs> I had this thing in my head that said I wasn't going to go to that to your school unless Dick Vitale was going to do one of my games. <laughs> it was going to be on ESPN. Okay. My last requirement was I had to have my name on the back of my jersey. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, so okay. All those three things, he was automatically built out my criteria. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's crazy. I forget, <laughs> forget the school, so I got letters from a, a million places, but that helped me. That was what helped me narrow it down. Okay, people. um, so the, the visit was amazing to Texas. Um, I also visited Rhode Island, they had okay. Catino Mobley, yep. Tyson Wheeler, they, they yeah. had. I also visited James Madison, who had Lefty Drizel, who's one of the best coaches in the country at the time. Right. Um, but uh, Texas was, you know, that was, I'm, I'm going there. You know what I mean? Longhorns, right. Big 12 Tennessee, basketball. That, yeah. that was out there. Reggie Freeman was out there and a couple other guys. Oh, and so, um, oh. yeah, so so Texas was where it's at. But then Tart came off, his, I didn't know if he was suspended or he just decided to come back. And he came back and he got in touch with me. And I had no idea where Fresno was. I knew it was in California. Unbeknownst to me, I'm thinking everywhere in California is LA. <laughs> like everywhere is palm trees, right. beach. Right. Like, so I'm like, uh, yeah. oh, it's, uh, yeah. it's tart? Oh, it's a no-brainer. You know what I mean? So I got out of my commitment to uh, to Texas, and I'm, I'm headed to Cali. Like, And for me, I wasn't afraid to leave Rockland. Like, I knew to be, to be better you know, for myself and my family. 
Like I had to leave, you know what I mean, to yeah. know the help. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. leaving home was no problem for me. So California was. Yeah. I'm gonna put the legendary Jerry Tarkanian. Like I'm about to do what Larry Johnson did. I'm gonna do what the UN what UNLV did. Like that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Like he told us like in no time this program's gonna be a top, you know, top twenty five program. And facts. Like, and it was like we yeah, right. so my year we started off number ten in the country. Um but when I got there to answer your question about my you know my skill set um and how it was, when I got there, I got there with seven all Americans. We had a Bondre Jones who transferred him from USC. We had Chris Heron who transferred in from Boston College. Yep. We had Jermaine Folks who transferred in from Cal. Yep. We had Terrence Roberson, who was a true freshman, like myself, the only other true freshman. But he had a, he was a four-time parade all American. You know what I mean? Um, I ended up playing with you know Ray Ferrals to skip to my Lou, yep. who had a, a great career in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, I can go on for days, but we had seven All Americans when I got there. Um, I wow. myself was also honorable mention All American, but I had seven legit All Americans that right. uh, that were that were that was there. And uh, I remember in the summer we got there and we're playing. We're in the gym before meeting or whatever, and everybody's playing once. But the difference is, I had never done this before. The dude, the rules was you can only get three dribbles. Three dribbles, uh, yeah, 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 yep, yep. And every time I started with the ball, I started off further than where I started when I checked the ball up from. <laughs> oh <laughs> and, man! <laughs> so I'm like, yo, and I'm watching these dudes like, you know, get to the basket on three dribbles with a defender in front of them, and I'm not able to do it, and they are. And I remember right. like, mm -hmm. afterwards thinking to myself, yo, I'm in over my head. Like, I'm not going to be able to, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, 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 don't, I might not be, belong here. Like, I might have bit off more than I could chew. Like, you right. Know what I mean? right. Um, but it was a, it was an amazing coach. And he'll come back in the story later named John Welch, who worked with me and worked, with my, worked on me. Like, every morning we was up in the gym. And uh, eventually got me caught up, man. Um, mm -hmm. But while I was trying to catch up, um, I had to figure out a way to get on the floor. Of course. And uh, Tremaine Folks, um, who, who also got a ring with Detroit, with the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, um, shout out to Tremaine. My sophomore year, he averaged about 11, 12 rebounds a game, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody else was even close. I think the next person was like four or five or whatever. And he declared for the NBA draft after that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember thinking, like, I can do what he did as far as the rebounding part. And no, we're going we're gonna to need that. So they're gonna need yeah. me on the floor. And right. so that's what became my role. And that's what became my niche. And I ended up being really good at it. Um, I got a lot of like publicity for it, broke all kind of records. I hold I was it. gonna ask you, I was gonna ask you about that record. 35 yeah. boards, 35 rebounds in one game? game. Yeah, yeah. Against that's SMU, insane. right? SMU. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's so insane. Um, that's Rodman like right there. <laughs> yeah, bro. man. That was, that was that was my key to being on the floor. That was my key yeah. to even. That's and, talking right. about being dialed in on the glass right there, man. right? You're getting his own rebounding just like you can score him, man. And uh, facts, I, I, I ate that roll up and I scored too. Like that game, I had 35, but also had 20 points, you know what I mean? Right. And the game before that, I had 29 rebounds, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I, my senior year, um, I led the country in rebounding, Courtney Alexander led the country in scoring, and wow. Melvin Eli led the the country and blocks and we were all yep 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 that game so, was crazy bro yeah, yeah. So the experience was, was incredible man like they did the documentary documentary on this uh between the madness which you can find yes. on youtube um oh oh hold on now oh, let, me, let me put that on watch later uh-oh i'm about to i'm about to put it on watch later did you say yeah. between the madness between the madness yep it was done Locked by Fox. Uh, it was before his time, man. Like all these documentaries coming out now, all these things, man. The dude came out like during that time, and she was incredible. But it was oh, just yeah. the story of all all of us. You know what I mean? All these kids from all different parts. Like, you know, obviously, you know, uh, it was also known as Second Chance U. The NCAA was coming down on hard on Tark still. Yeah, it um, worked. They were. We had a lot of guys, a lot of young kids who got in trouble, and some of it warranted, some of it not. Right. But all the attention was on us, man. And we just couldn't. Right. We we definitely had the best roster on paper in the country, like three, four years. And we sent during Tark's tenure as a little known fact, during Tark's tenure, we sent more players to the NBA than any other uh school in the country. Um, wow. You think about that, yeah. That's yeah. crazy. 
So we just sad. couldn't all be on the floor at the same time because it kept suspending us. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for, different, for different reasons. But uh, and you, you'll see the documentary just kept happening and happening. Like some of these road trips we was going on, we was going on with five, six, seven players. Because we couldn't keep everybody eligible. But um, yeah, but, I mean, it was an incredible ride, man. And I'm, I'm of the firm belief everything happens for a reason. Um, my, my first year out there, I had my oldest son who's 26 now and a coach himself at Fresno City College. You know what I mean? Okay. That's you know what's what I mean? up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is what's up, man. Wow. That's 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 just amazing. And, of course, yeah. the 35 rebounds, I remember when I read that, I was like, wait. <laughs> Slow down. Did this D1? I was like, right. how come I don't hear about this crazy? I need to hear about this more. Like, I don't think anybody man. ever ever comes near that, to be honest, um, like, even I in think- this day and age. <laughs> Had like thirty or thirty-one. Kenneth Reed had like thirty. 30 okay. 30. Okay. Yeah, because he's act. He was active like that. So it's funny because I, I was watching the game just kind of in the background, and I remember, or maybe I was watching ESPN or whatever, and it was talking about it later, and I was like, "Oh, that's the closest to uh, to Larry Abney." You know what I mean? Since since two thousand, you know what I mean? And right, I'm, right, right. It's still up there, man. And, and every cool, year, man. like ESPN I mean, on Twitter, or something, is a birthday to the record or something. You know what yeah. I mean? so, it's a good look. Hell yeah, yeah. man. I mean, 23 <laughs> years strong now. You're always so, in there. That's what I like about that. That's something they yep. can never take away. Even yep. if it gets broken, you're still there. So yep. I don't sure. think it will Rockland be in this County day. representative. You know what I mean? Can't be bad at that. <laughs> That's right. So, Indeed. It's crazy, Indeed. man. But it seems like the college yeah. career was a blast. I mean, you played with legendary guys, Ray Falls. Everybody. <laughs> Tremaine yeah. folks. Right. Uh, uh, Chris Heron. Yeah. Uh, Courtney Alexander, Melvin mm-hmm. Ellie. Like, you played with dogs. Like, did you learn a lot from those guys? Because, like you said, Tark was just shipping them to the A, like, left and right. So. Uh, absolutely, man. Like, um, and a lot of us are still, you know, in touch one way or another. Like, now we leave each other's lives and come back. Um, a lot of us are still friends and, uh, you know, we're still in contact and we still root for each other in all our perspective fields. And uh, I mean, we've all got incredible journeys, man. And uh, I did learn a lot for them. I learned sometimes what not to do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. But um, I can always lean on these guys for, for different things, you know what I mean? For, for whatever it is. You know? That's what's up, man. For sure. So for sure. Now, I mean, this is usually the part where my brother takes over. But, you know, I just got a quick question. How was the transition? from going from the amateur life yeah to the professional life because i think you played what 12 13 years professional yeah right? yeah man i, I was years. definitely blessed man like um again uh, like it, it's amazing like this entire ride this entire journey has been amazing um you know as soon as college was done we lost in the tournament um to wisconsin who ended up going to the elite eight that year or whatever and mm. as soon as it was over i moved out to vegas with my agent um you know, I was told I'd be take, taken late second or, you know, early second if I was lucky. Um, I ended up not getting drafted, but at the end of the draft, Denver called and said, you know, if nobody takes you, we're bringing you in. So the next wow. day after the draft, I flew into Denver. I went to Denver as a free agent. Okay. And I, I went to camp up there, went through there. Um, and it was this a is, time. I'm sorry to cut you off. This is two, yeah. year 2000, right? This is 2000. Yeah. Yep. So I'll go with the Denver Nuggets. I want to see who's yeah. on that team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting cut uh, right after camp. Um, but, again, a great experience. Scary as hell, yeah, because then at that point you have no idea what's, you know. What's going on, right? Yeah, you know? make a break, really. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so my fir- I ended up leaving there and going to Korea. My first overseas job was Korea. And that was a culture shock. You know what I mean? Okay. I was, man. Um I went to, and I played in so many different countries. I mean, I had NBA stints. I had small stints with Denver, Boston, as well as Dallas. Um, but my overseas experience, you know, I tell a lot of people, like, when I first started it, the, when I first started it, it was, you know, kind of disappointing because obviously everybody's, you know, uh, focused on getting to the league. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, you got, you're watching TV, you're watching these guys you competed with for the last four years. Um, actually, you know, eight years because a lot of them are from high school as well. Right, watching these guys, and some of them, you know, you're thinking, I bust his ass, like you know what I mean? Yeah, right, 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 right. right. So before before you continue on, I just want to I want to tell you, DSP, who was on this Denver roster for that 2000 2001 team? Okay, uh, we had 
Antonio McDice. Yeah. Um, Corey we had uh, Keon James Clark. Posey. James Posey. Posey was here. Yeah. Posey yep. too. Yep. Oh, wow. Fresh out of okay. Fresh out of Xavier. Yeah. Uh, there's Mark Strickland. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's see, Terry Davis. I remember Terry Davis. He's a little older then by then. Right. Uh, but then they had big, big men: Rafe LaFriends, Garth mm-hmm. Joseph, Kevin Willis. So it wasn't. I can see there wasn't <laughs> a lot of room for an undrafted free agent to try right. and make a team like this because right, you know, right, right. They've, they've. It looks like they had their guys already. And then I mean, the, the one, the two rookies they had were both big men. They brought right. in. A uh, Garth Joseph and Dan McClintock. I mean, they both ain't do North, North much Arizona, in the league, but seven foot stiff. <laughs> yeah, seven yeah. footers, big seven footers. They had yeah. so wow. I can totally it's understand. Funny, it's funny because like um, it's a different time where it's like you know at that time I'm six eight. You know, at the time I'm probably two twenty five, two thirty, and back then you, you were called a tweener at that six eight. Yep. Position, yeah. Six, eight class. Because you play like a four, but you're like the size of a three three for that time, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Where now, at my size right now, you're 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 big. You might be a five, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like multi-positional, and like they're looking for you. They're looking for me. You know what I mean? Um, Everything, you know. Again, it was the wrong time, but I I, I firmly believe everything happens for a reason. You know what I mean? Right. Again, who knows? I I might have got eleven kids with. 14 baby mothers or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Max, yo. It's the it's truth. It's true, man. It's, it's true, true, bro. It's so true, my, my bro. My path is my path, and I, I have no regrets about it. You know what I mean? Good. Like, I definitely uh, had an incredible journey. Um, right. I played in uh, played in Korea. I played in Holland. I played in uh, uh, I played in uh, Australia for five years. I played in France. Okay. Um, I played in Ukraine. played in Argentina. Um where I'm leaving out yeah, a bunch. Please, of- we're gonna we're gonna break we're gonna break all that down right now. I actually want to start. So I'm gonna go. I because I I looked at the Wikipedia and I, sometimes I like all right. Sometimes Wikipedia ain't fully accurate, but I'm sure they got your years down. So I kind of want to break it down from yeah. when you started when you left Fresno, right up until you got to Australia. Then we'll talk about Australia, and yeah. then I want to talk about post Australia. Um. Like when you when you traveled out to Europe and like when you were in the Netherlands and Argentina and all that. So let's yeah, start yeah, back. Yeah. I'm gonna go off of what this says and please correct me if this is wrong. All right. All right. They said they said you joined uh, the USBL, the Pennsylvania yeah. Valley Dogs, in 2000. Yeah. So USBL that was an amazing league and a lot of pros played in that league. So um, okay. I wish they would bring it back. They had um, it was a, like a spring league. And they had a ton of scouts there, and a lot of like young college kids would play there. And okay. uh, a lot of I, I was actually coached by Daryl Dawkins in that league. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, wow. So good of, dog. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of uh, where coaches go to cut their coaching experience as well as right, as right, right, right. Um, and so that was an amazing experience as well. Um, it's where you learn the pro game because that's when you went from playing college rules to playing pro rules. Like, you know right, I mean? um, right. So it was, a, it was a great lesson in, in teaching you how to uh, play the pro game. But yeah, Pennsylvania Valley Dogs. You know who the yeah. owner of that team was? The yeah. owner of that team was Larry Holmes, the boxer. The boxer? Yeah. Really? Wow, yeah. that's Larry crazy. Holmes was the owner of our team, and Dow Dawkins was my coach. Wow, <laughs> that's so ill. That that's crazy. So Ill. That's, that's crazy. Ill. That's ill. That's Ill. I'm sorry. That's crazy. That's okay. Crazy. So, so that was just a just one one season in the spring. Because I also see here, they also show that you played in a league called the IBL, the International Basketball League. But that didn't last yeah. long. Yeah, I was. I just. Uh, I don't even know what that league. I think that league folded. But uh, yeah, that was, it says it only lasted about two years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. think I played a season there. That was the over in Jersey. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Was, I see I that. Like, yeah. yeah, it says the Trenton student stars for the IBL season, and you went back to the Valley Dogs. Yeah, and this is this this is what I want to hear about. You played for man. I'm gonna I want to say what it was called then, but I might get it wrong. The Mobis, Mobis, Mobis Automons. Is that yeah, that's that was the team in Korea. Sounds like a sounds like a transformer or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the team in Korea. Man. So how incredible. so was it was there strict rule because we know how Korea is. Like now, I, I watched the Rodman documentary, and you can't do whatever you want. I've heard stories about professional wrestlers going there, and they can't do what they want. So, what I, 
that's Northern Korea. So Northern okay. Korea and South, Southern Korea are two completely different. Um, oh, know, okay. Like Northern Korea is a dictatorship, yep. where Southern Korea is more, you know, what I mean, uh, you know, more, more, more free. Not not as free as the U.S., but you know, what I mean, you can, you can move freely, like you know, okay. what I mean. Um, and that was a that was a good experience. I mean, for the most part, because when I got there, it was crazy because I, I had an Adidas contract, um, and uh, they the Adidas ended up sponsoring that entire team when I went over there. Oh. So like that was that was like so they had wow. they already had everything laid out. It was dope. So we lived on a campus. When I got there, I thought the setup was the most incredible thing ever. Like you lived on like this like this whole like uh, campus. Like they had their own campus. They had a basketball gym. We had a driver, you had a chef, um, the floors was heated, like you lived in a dormitory. Wow. Wow. It was laid out sweet. But after a few months, it wasn't cool because like nobody on my team spoke English except for another other American. And yeah, luckily we got along because we mm -hmm. like when our interpreter wasn't there, he's all who I could talk to. Right. And so this is the day before, like before you can be when, when you used to call the states and everything like was a dollar 19 a minute like so my phone bill would be astronomical like, yeah oh yeah, yeah. I mean, was yeah. A dollar a month. like it was incredible like you know I mean? you had to get the calling cards you had to buy them a hundred dollars a pop yeah you know I mean? yep. Yep. yeah out, you yep. another one you couldn't just pick up and call calling cards throwback ah, yeah oh, i went to bed and woke up old calling cards but um it was uh the, the basketball was intense, it was crazy, like the fans was crazy. Um, but again, I locked myself in the room, played that the NCAA game you showed me at the beginning of the segment. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. Madness. Yes, sir, yes, yes sir. sir. And, and the other American, we played cards and gamble. And we probably like in a single night, we probably exchange two, three grand. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'll lose three grand, the next night I get it back, the next night I lose four, the next night. Because that's what we had to do. Right. <laughs> and cool. so, and like, that was my first payday, too. Like, that was the first time I ever actually got like a real payday. Okay. Like, um, and I remember that my first my first payday was in cash, like U.S. cash. And mm -hmm. I remember I was in my room and I remember just throwing it up in the air and just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm here. Hell I'm yeah. Here. Like, <laughs> making it rain. <laughs> but I mean, so that was good about that. And then also, we in Australia, I mean, uh, in Korea. Like you can get like the the suits, you can get them made for like a hundred, two hundred dollars. So I remember bringing back to the U.S. I brought back like mass suits, like tailored suits, because you can get them right. tailored for like next to nothing. Right. And this is also when you remember uh, the jerseys. Like everybody had the jerseys, uh, football, fitted. basketball. Yeah. So they made those over there too. So you was getting when people was paying one hundred fifty for over here, for you get them for like twenty five dollars over there. Right, 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 so right. right. Back with like. I remember custom stopped me and was like, "Yo, you you can't sell these." I'm like, "Nah, they're all for me. They're mine. <laughs> right, 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 right. They're mine. Right, right." I had so many jerseys, and then Hope shut it down with the button up, and then yep. all the jerseys went to waste. Yep, 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 <laughs> Blame Hope. But uh, so we don't do that no more. We're grown. <laughs> we gotta wear button ups. Come on. Exactly. That, like, yeah, my career my career experience was, was pretty dope, man. It was my first time actually like getting to like obviously I'd been out of the country before, but like being ingrained and like being abroad for seven eight nine months at a time that was my first experience and uh mm. like that made you grow up fast of course sure. yeah oh yeah so i want to i wanted to ask was so you were out in korea playing in that league was there a was there an influence from the nba that you saw out there or anything like that's around the time where iverson was getting popular so it was like was there any nba influence that you saw when you were playing in that korean league Every country, like every country, um, they try and model their league after the NBA. That's why they, you know, you often hear that the NBA is the best um, league in the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not just for the players, but because that's what everyone tries to emulate. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so when you're overseas, you're essentially is their version of the NBA. You know what I yeah. mean? So right. you're treated as such. You know what I mean? So like. Okay. Um, you know, they, you can't go everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, right. Because you can stop a player over there, and if you're a bad player, they let you know it too. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're not doing okay. well, the team as well. <laughs> but okay. like, you know what I mean, you have to move. You know, sometimes for security, sometimes not, depending on where you were, like uh, how right. big of the city you were in. Um, okay. But like the NBA influence was like like heavily like 
they try to translate it. And some countries did it better than others. Um, but everywhere you went, it was it was super heavily influenced by the NBA. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's tough. Okay, so I'm seeing here they said you played for that KBL season. How'd that go? Any 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 accolades that year or yeah, anything? They had the All Star team. They like again. They had the All Star team, and it was a big. You know, what I mean, it was they had it like down in uh, uh, in Taiwan, which is where like the, uh, the 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 biggest like the army base was. Okay. Their, their park, so. so you go to army base and chill. But um, they had big arena. Like just every other country, they got big arena. So. You're I playing, was gonna ask you how many people, people were there, playing. like watching. Yeah, so fifteen thousand. You you're playing, but yeah, in front of, in Korea, you played in front of like 10, 15,000 people a night. Wow, that's and, that's uh, that's the NBA. It's uh, very similar. Yes, yeah, very, yeah. Um, don't get me wrong; you had some teams that didn't have that big of a following, like you of, know, course, of course, of course, thousand. But like the, the big teams, the good teams, or um, the big cities, like you'll get a, a nice, nice, a nice crowd. Yeah, and nice. the, the game's on TV as well. So, you know what I mean? Nice. Everybody knew who he was from the TV. But they had their version of the ESPN. So, like, your highlights okay. on TV at night. Um, so, everybody knew who you were. Mm. Um, but um, I made the all-star team over there. Um, you know, um, I think we lost in, like, the second or third round. And at that time, like, again, by the, like I told you, at the end of the season, I was so ready to leave and go back home. Number one, like, I was about to go home with money for the first time. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, and the other part was just I was just over like I was just over not you know being in you know engraved in the American culture like I wanted yeah. to get home and eat American yeah, it was different you know what I mean um, like that early being over there probably the first two three places I went like I wasn't happy about being over there you know what I mean like oh, like okay. I, said, I wanted to be in the states and you know what I mean I, I didn't want to try nobody's food you know what I mean but that mm-hmm. later changed man. I, I start mm-hmm. trying all kind of different stuff I start. Like looking forward to it. like when I said okay I'm a, I'm an overseas player and like I embraced it you know what I mean um, I started you know not only being in the country but the neighboring countries like if I had a day off I go like I played in Portugal on a day off I go to Spain because it was a train ride away you know what I mean yep. mm. so I really got to see the whole world like when I played in Australia and the season was over instead of coming straight home I go chill out in Fiji for two weeks like so I really you know like got an opportunity I played in uh in uh, Kosovo and uh, where else did I go? I played in uh, played in some other like Middle Eastern country, and I ended up going to Egypt and hanging out there for a couple of weeks and going to see the pyramids and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also made my own documentary. It's called um, it's called uh, Sky's the Limit. It's also on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. I was looking at. I was wishing we I watched it before. It out, over, I saw yep. like the first two minutes. I said, "Man, I wish I watched this before the yep. interview." We gonna check I'm, that I'm out. I'm definitely gonna sure. check it out. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, the way I put it, the way I put it on YouTube at the time, it had to do it in parts. So it's yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. All you got was ten yeah. minutes. Ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yep. 10 minutes. That. So it's ten, uh, six parts of ten minutes. It's like an hour long. An hour. Yeah. Yep. But, but it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. For sure. For yeah. sure. You were ahead of your time, bro. You were ahead of your time, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching it. I'm like, yo, he's vlogging. <laughs> yep. That's a, that's that's what what a vlog. Doing. That's what would. That's what YouTubers do nowadays yeah. with their fans. Nah, it, you were just vlogging. It's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Not, okay. I don't know if you guys are, so, if you guys remember if you guys were like um Ronnie Street he came out with a DVD called Paper Chase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so. I was on that DVD rapid. <laughs> All right, so when Ronnie came out with Paper Chase, um it kind of gave me the idea cuz I had a whole bunch of footage um not, with no intention of, of of doing that, but um I just had footage from everywhere I've been and so what I did was I after Paper Chase I was like, yo, I can I want to do something like that. But right. like you know, without the fighting and stuff. Right, right, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody will always be like, "Yo, what we where you was at? What it was like? You know, how was it?" You know, right. what I mean? asking about the girls, about the money, about the basketball, about everything. So I was like, I'll answer all these questions. So what I had my boy Chester do was um, ask me a question. Like he'll ask me a question, like, "Oh, so what's it like over in this country?" Like, and then so I'll I'll answer the question, then I'll cut to footage to the footage right yeah right. Then, that's fire it was really that's fire. It was okay yeah i i the name paper chase sounds super familiar i think it was like popular around that time when smack dvds was coming out and all that time yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I said, well, it, was, it was before all that he said it all like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. I, it sounds very familiar he said paper chase i'm like man i think if he has some rappers <laughs> there i think it's the one you're thinking of bravo okay Trust me, it's the right. one you're thinking i remember going out to the city to film something for paper chase dvd yeah, 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 and all them at five star, and I'm like, man, he ringing a bell right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's get back. Let's get back to the to the to the journey. So, 
It's showing me here you joined a team called the Adirondack Wildcats for that USBL team. That was USBL uh, again. Like, when yeah. I come back, like uh, I, I, I linked up with them again. Okay. Um, my coach in that one was Mike Malone, uh, the, oh, the wow. great uh, Utah Jazz. Yeah. Um, and I think he played for the Sixers as well. Yeah. But, yeah, that was another good experience. I played wow, that's one of my teammates on that team was um, was uh, uh, Terrell Owens. You know what I mean? So, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get out of here! Is he doing hooping in two thousand two? Like he's wilding. <laughs> that was on the bro. summer, right? I'm guessing yeah. it was like a he's summer a league. Yeah. He's yeah. not playing the NFL. Yo, exactly. he's definition of an athlete. I mean, yeah. he had footage. He was damn near fifty. And he's playing in this other league, playing football, like in a real league. Yo, he's still running a four-something at yeah. He's going to be like he's 70, running. still trying to play. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. Tell me you, bro. I love me some T.O., bro. Why? Right, so Yo, I'm telling you. You play with them, and then you finally got that NBA opportunity. Uh, you join the Celtics in that 0-2 Summer League. Please tell me about the Summer League, the experience, because I've seen it, but I'd love to know how it was and the, and the pressure and and – the sense of urgency you must have had at that time. I mean, that was awesome as well. Like, I mean, I had done the summer league also with Denver as well, but uh, okay. in Boston, that was cool because, like, um, a lot of people got to see me play because that summer league was actually in Boston. So a lot of people came up to New York and, and got to watch oh, me play. Oh, nice. Nice. And um, that, was, that was another good experience. Uh, Coach O'Brien was there that year. Um, but, again, um, you know, it didn't pan out over the long haul. You know what I mean? Um, of course. But um, again, a, a great, amazing experience. You know what I mean? Um, of course, of you know, course. For whatever reason, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You get that. You get that call into from the the trainer tapping on the shoulder. And again, in all three of my experiences, I made it to the very end. You know what I mean? Um, right. And I, and I could have still looking hard, bro. Try. Like I had other opportunities to try. You know what I mean? Um, um, to 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 go to summer leagues, to 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 go to teams, but you know, you're doing it for free. And at this time, I got a I got a child. You know what I mean? And I'm making real money overseas. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Now I'm right. comfortable, so it's like all right, I can't keep doing this for free. When, of course, absolutely. <laughs> when okay, I got people willing to pay me to do it, you know what I mean? All right. All I just right. wanna, I just wanna point out who was on this team: the 0203 Celtics. So you're looking at uh, a, in his prime, Vin Baker, mm -hmm. Vin, Tony okay. Petit, yeah. Mark Vin. Blunt. Yeah, who was Mark my Brian? Who, who was my teammate with the Gauchos as well? <laughs> Mark oh, Blunt. wow, okay. Nice. Yeah, uh, you got Grant Long, who is literally you're the same size as you, but 14 <laughs> years of NBA experience, right? Yeah. Right, uh, and Antoine Walker, who's literally yeah, yeah Twan same was size there. as you, okay. but but the guy for Boston at that time, Aaron right. Williams was another guy who was there. So, yeah. I see here, I don't remember this guy, Ruben Wok. Owski? I don't know. Bell, so I, I don't know. Maybe that could have been a Larry Abney spot. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. But uh, all right. So, okay. I like this. This is the spot I like here. So, the uh, is it the second season of the NBDL? I believe so, because the inaugural season was 01, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. The, so, the O2 D League, you're selected in the 10th round to the Asheville Altitude, who's now the Oklahoma City Blue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it used to be the Tulsa 66ers, but you're now on the Oklahoma where you play for the Asheville Altitude. And this is like, they're one of the founding teams, DSP, of, of the league. So yeah. talk to me how about that was. I'm pretty sure nowadays it's completely different story with the G League and with the sponsorships and more TV exposure. So please talk right. about how the D League was then. Yeah, that's what so, I remember as a kid um, the D League. Again, that, like, like you said, like this is the year, like I think the CBA was starting for the CBA who had, had carried that torch for the longest time and a lot of right. NBA players that come from that that league. Um the NBA started to finally start to invest in the development league for the for for here in the States. Mm -hmm. And um again my agent talked me into you know I want to go back overseas and get some more bread. Yeah and he's like you know hey Larry like you're close you know what I mean like I, I really think this is something that you should you know take advantage of. You know what I mean right. so I did it. And um, I ended up making the uh, uh, honorable mention All D League, which was which was incredible. Um, yeah. Again, this is a uh, the, the call up system is a lot different. Like it's 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 a lot different. Like like then it was the D League, and how we traveled, it was like <laughs> it was yeah. like 
like you D-list celebrity. <laughs> right. So compare that to Korea. I'm guessing that's like apples and oranges at this point. Oh right? my goodness. Man. Yeah. Like, like, oh man. Like we got we got we got these apartments. Uh I'm in Ash I'm mind you, I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. North Carolina. I have no Carolina. idea where, where I'm at. In the right. Of the mountains or whatever. And I yep. think all the teams, I think they had a team in Roanoke, Virginia. They had a team in like Greensboro, South Carolina, or North Carolina. I don't yeah, even know. There were some real third like, city teams. That that states, was, yeah. That's what they always were. You're playing in front of, you know, I'm going in front of playing. And like I said, 10,000 people now, you got to be your own motivation because now you're playing in front of like 30 people. And yeah. <laughs> right. It's insane to think about. Right. Those are working. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's so, insane. But again, like it was hoop, you know what I mean? And I love the hoop, man. And right. I played against some great um, players in that league as well, like players who later on went on to have amazing NBA careers. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, again, so even on my coach there, Joey Myers, who I work with now with the Clippers, is a scout for the Clippers. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I mean, so that came full circle as well. Right. So, yeah, I was about to say that. Like that, the D League has come so, so such a long way, like you said, it's now the G League, yeah. which I'm the associate, I'm associate head coach in. Um, yeah. But, um, yes, sir. I love again, that. Again, G now stands for Gatorade. It's no longer the D for development, but it's yeah. just right. for And the pay is a lot better. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you got guys on two way contracts getting, you know, over over half a mil a year. That's um, great. That's coming yep. in versus Absolutely. versus the 60 that we were being paid. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Wow. So, wow. It's a long way, but, long uh, way. Yeah, but it's, 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 uh, Again, another incredible experience on my stepping stone. Um, it's cool. It's cool to be a part of history because you were a part of that crew. Again, you guys were playing in front of nobody and and getting paid way less than what these guys are now getting paid twenty years later to be in the same position that you were in. So you can see that the NBA has improved dramatically from what they had at the D League to where they have at the G League now. I think, so. I think one of the most beneficial um evolutions of the of the league was back then um the teams weren't really affiliated to anyone specific yeah you know I mean? right. so it was just a league and um there were call-ups and you can get called up to anybody at the time and obviously the call-ups were way less than they are now right um, now every team has an affiliate you know yeah. what i mean kind of like a uh, baseball yeah exactly right. and so now there's like a real development plan for the players that are down here, you know what right. I mean? Um, like, so, like, right now, like, you know, you you get a, a, a team, a guy on a team, and he's sitting here with a plan, you know what I mean? Right. This is why he's here. This is what he needs to work on. This is why okay. he needs to develop. On, okay. You know I mean? Okay. Um, and he'll get, he'll go up through uh, a couple times during the year, um, you know, sometimes more often than not, and he'll get NBA minutes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, if he's out of the rotation, he may come down here just so um, he's ready when his number is called to get um, to step in and, and and play and be and be ready. And right. Uh, but that's right. Been, that's been huge because a lot of these guys um, that are you know G League players have stepped in and played major minutes, not just in the regular season, but in playoff games. In playoff games, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For, right. Yeah. Because I'm I'm thinking right so. When it was still called the D League, at some point, what I felt like if you were a rookie or something like that and you got sent to the D League, uh, we were always like, oh no, this ain't good. He went to the D right, League. Right, right, right. So my first, if my own, my, the first person that pops into my head, Hashim Thabi, second yeah. pick overall, seven footer, ex- yeah. good, good, good arm straight. He, he, uh, the wingspan was crazy, right? Yeah. He could block anything. And he yeah. played, I think he got drafted by Memphis. And then like that same year, he went to the D League. And I'm like, First thing I thought, I was like, he's done. There's his career. Yeah. <laughs> but now, nowadays, it's like, oh, they're going down to the G League. I mean, they even have the Ignite team where yeah, right. the guys that want to skip college, all right, we're going to play that one year and see what we can do. Like, right. it's it's such a beautiful thing to see because I'll tell you, I think the beat was what, 05, 06? Oh, yeah. And we were mm-hmm. like, oh, his career is done. Now it's yeah. like, okay, you got guys going to the G League. All right, good. It's now they're going to develop and get ready to be the next guy. So yeah, exactly. definitely um, love that. Exactly. Like, you know, you got Poole who, you know, Jordan Poole, who's obviously, yep. you know what I mean, just got, you know, a, a ton of money. He's like the latest guy who benefited from the G League, who, who played big minutes in the G League and was able yep. to go up and significantly help his team be right. better. Um, right. They got a team right now in Mexico City 
that doesn't have an affiliate, but it's a test market for an NBA team. You know what I mean? So we just came back okay. a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and they're not, there's not Mexicans down on the team. I mean, there's a couple, but there's Americans. Um, Playing down in Mexico. Ken Faree is on that team. You know what I mean? Okay. So you got some guys who are, you know, trying to get one little last push, uh, you know, and get into the league, you know, or stay in right. shape for whatever reason. Um, right. And that was the difference they did too. I remember, I think the D League had an age requirement, I felt like at some point, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. the G League. Yeah. It's like you got experience. You trying to get a second chance? Come on in. We'll Come take it. So. Right. If, well, if a team is willing to get you know to 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 give you that I, that opportunity, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So all right. So you were you were with that team. Uh, you're with the Asheville Altitude. Now it looks like you're starting to head back out overseas. You went to France to play for the LNB is LNB Pro B. So this is the. Yeah, Almost like the Google. developmental out in France. It sounds like yeah. seems like. So it's not it's not a developmental. So the way they do it um in uh in in uh in the Euro Cup. So what they do is you have your, your they have like about 12, 16 teams, right? However many teams is in that league. And the last two teams, if you finish in the last two teams, you get bumped down to pro B. Ah, okay, like relegated oh, yeah. or okay, or promoted. Exactly. Okay, okay, so okay. Sponsorships, okay. like you know what I mean. And so the pro B teams are trying to get back to pro A. You know pro what I mean? So, yep. Okay. Yeah, so if you, if you finish in the top two in the, in, the, in, the, in that season, the next year you're pro A. You know what I mean? You can gotcha. sponsor your money back, and that's, you know what I mean? So that's how that goes. So, you know, okay. people aren't just comfortable losing. You know what I mean? And getting right, paid. right, right. I like, I like that. that. That's I good. Like that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> so uh, I went over there on a, on a pro B team, um, trying to help them get back to pro A. It was unsuccessful in getting them to pro A, but next year I went to a different team. Um, and uh, in the pro A, but uh, okay, yeah, okay. but yeah, so, France was right. amazing. Love France, like France was man because the first team that that Bouvet team was uh, was right um, right outside of Paris. Oh, nice! Yeah. So I spent a lot of time in Paris, man. Right, uh, man. It that's was, that's okay. Was, uh, yeah. Man, you, go- you globe trotted for yeah, real, and bro. and I and I literally had to look at a country. I'm like, where is this? On the next question, I'm gonna ask him because we're gonna wrap yeah. up 05. Um, I don't even know how to say it, but you were in Cyprus for the Cyprus, Cyprus well, basketball Greece, division, Greece, right? One. Yeah, that's Greece. Greece, okay, Greece. okay. okay. Yeah. So I'm oh, reading, was- I'm like, where is this? <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was incredible. That was a great experience. Um, another uh, Euro Cup team. Um, so even though we were in Greece, we got to play all over the the uh, all over Europe, you know, right. in, in, in the cup okay. games. Um, and again, nice. um. I got some kind of award over there. I forgot what I, I forgot what I got, but I was like all all Euro League or something. Or, okay. Or, but it was a uh, that was a great experience. Okay. That was that was awesome. It was beautiful. Awesome. Do they love their basketball in Greece they back do. then? I mean, obviously soccer is right. of course is, that's is number one always. Yeah, like absolutely football, but um, but basketball definitely got love for sure. That's what's nice. up. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. All right. And you so, get to learn a ton too, man. Like you know, Greece and Turkey got a few that like. That is unbelievable, man. Like, like, like all the stuff that you you you. I learned more from traveling than I could have ever learned in any social studies class. You know what I mean? Right. Not getting meeting people and talking to people and uh, understanding right. why they you know dislike other cultures or dislike or get along with other cultures or don't cross certain borders or why right. countries split. Like you know what I mean? Like you yeah. meet actual people and friends and teammates and like, right. You know what I mean? And and. You, you're giving a lot of knowledge about the all through basketball, man. That's right, crazy, right, right, right. All through basketball for sure. All right, so from from start from Greece, you head down to Venezuela, yeah, playing for the oh my Cocodrilos. god, Cocodrilos. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to say crocodiles, but they say <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, I'm looking at the logo now. There it is, Cocodrilos. Yeah. Okay, so Venezuela. Okay, playing in Caracas know. in Venezuela, yeah. yeah. But Caracas, man. You wouldn't know if somebody like put you to sleep and you woke up in uh Caracas, you would think you was in the Bronx. <laughs> really? Yeah, like it was wow. really like, it was really like that. Like that's, that, crazy. that's, that's crazy. That, that basketball, those fans are like they're crazy. Like, cause the stadiums are kind of outside, right? Mm. And like they got a they got roofs, but after a certain point, like like the it's open, like so like. You got the stadium and the, and the stands or whatever, but behind the stands is like open, so it's like outside. You know what I mean? So okay. like you, you coming down the street, 
like in the city and like you can hear the roar like imagine madison square garden when the knicks are playing but it's open it's open right, <laughs> right. right. that's, that's crazy. crazy yeah so that was dope man but um like you asked me about like the fans and stuff and like some of these countries like like greece like greece um venezuela they take their the fans are so crazy like they they, they take it so serious that they got to be separated like they got to be separated by like a fence in the middle and you got like in some of these arenas you got like turtle shell cops like riot cops to keep the fans what? apart like, they keep, like, <laughs> they have the, like all that ole the soccer games like you hear the ole yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and a lot of the songs they chitting at the other people like right you know, right 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 like, it's really like like oh, don't man. disrespect my team like it's wow that's like, fire bro that, that, is, that makes you like, play harder man they play, they play in that environment you know what i mean like where you know you start to take on even though you're not from there you start to take on like what it means to them so you start that's trying right. to win for them you know what right. i mean right like absolutely it's, it's important like i'm talking about tears crying when you lose like you know what i mean like it, okay. it means something to these. To That's these fire. Teams. That's amazing. DS, DSP, amazing. if you could do me a favor, I, I I was googling the stadium. They might play in a different one now, but I'm 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 trying to see if you could pop this up. Is this that similarity? Yeah, where it's yeah. open outside. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's oh, that I mean, this is fire, another bro. shot. Yeah. So it seats a lot of people, yeah. but that openness must be. Oh my lord, that must it's have been crazy, insane to be like, a part you know of. I mean? But wow. a lot of games are at night too. So like outside of it, you got the whole city that's live. Like it's. Yeah. yeah, it must have felt like like being at the Rucker times a, a thousand with the stadium, <laughs> right? Like a stadium that's Rucker, you know? A that's great a, context. That's yeah. a great context for sure. Oh my lord, that's it's, insane! That's All right. I just I just wanted to pop that up real quick. <laughs> no, I, I had to fire. look it up. Yeah. Was, okay, no, so Venezuela, I got Venezuela. That's fire. All right, where we at yeah. here? All right. Um, then it said you played for the New Jersey Flyers. That must have been another USBL stint. I'm guessing. Yeah, I did like two three games on that. Like, yeah. Okay. I mean, and then I see, uh, I'm going to try to say, Dominican Republic hoops, Reales de, de la Vega. Yeah, yeah, Dominican was crazy. That was, okay. that was similar to Venezuela, but uh, okay. That, was, okay. that was a great experience as well. But they crazy down there, man. Like, that's, <laughs> like, I'll tell you a quick story about uh, the Dominican. So we down there, right? And we in the locker room. This is my first, my first game, we in the locker room. And um, the little trainer dude, he's walking around and he's like, you know, um, everybody, I guess the, the locker room, the lockers, our lockers weren't safe. They could be broken into or whatever. So you give him your jewelry and all your valuables and he'll take them and put them away. So, you know, you got dudes taking off Rolexes, taking off their chains or whatever, like, you know what I mean? Taking off all their jewelry. So the dude next to me, he takes off his jewelry, gives his money, gives it to the, um, what's the name? Then he reaches his locker, pulls out a gun, <laughs> gives it to the trainer. Wait a minute. So I'm sitting and I'm looking at this and I'm like... <laughs> And I'm looking around, like, is anybody gonna react like that? Right, right. The trainer, the trainer then he wasn't phased. He took it, put it in the thing, like, you know what I mean? Right. And so I, I, I'm 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 looking to my left to see if the dude next to me is like gonna react, like, because my eyes is looking like yours. Yeah, <laughs> right, like, right, 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 right. Like, wait a minute. My left, like, yo, anybody he pull out his gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, where's mine? Hold on. Like, wait a did, did it come with a contract? <laughs> like, where's my gun? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, but great. The medical school. That's um, crazy. That, that was a good experience. That's but, crazy. Wow. Yeah, That's crazy. For sure. Um, all right. So here we go. This is, I, I wanted to get that out the way because it seems like Australia, um, you, you join the, let me get this team right, the Townsville Crocodiles. Yeah. Um, I have a I have a little bit of highlights from uh, a YouTube channel here that's got <laughs> some highlights for y'all. So I, it might be a little grainy for now, but let me <laughs> let me get it up. Hold on, real quick. Um, let me share that. So talk talk to me about when you joined uh, Townsville. So and man, how that, that came about? That that was um, I actually left the Dominican. I think I I was um, I left the Dominican to go to, to Australia. Um, I got a call to head out there. Somebody had just gotten hurt. And so they brought me out there, um, probably the, like the second game into the season. And I wasn't expected to do much. Like I was just, you know, supposed to fill this guy's spot. And I ended up being um, uh, co-MVP of the year, my first year. And Australia, I loved it, man. Like when you talk about fans and like trying to emulate that NBA experience, that's Jelani Gardner you see right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that experience from like, trying to emulate like because you had the ESPN you had the announcers they had all-star games 
We traveled great. They flew us all over the country. Mm. All the cities was on um, beaches. Um, like my my where I lived, I lived on a high rise, like right on the beach. Like mm. that that city right there was right on the Barrier Reef. Um, okay. Oh, nice. and, yeah, because in Australia, the mainland, it's like desert and all that. Y'all can't. There's no yeah, inhabitants the middle. there. Yeah, right exactly. in the middle of it. So yeah. everything's on, on the, the shore. Yeah, everything's on the shore. So we, I was on the Barrier Reef, man, and it was, uh, it was incredible. Like everything that you're taught is paradise. As a child, it was. That's what it was like over there. Mm. Um, so, for example, like if you can go outside in, in in New York, and like a pigeon, like if you're eating outside, like a pigeon might come up to you. You know, what I mean, you're not phased by it. You know, what I mean, pigeon come by, grab whatever, and keep it moving. Right. Over there, you got like this colorful ass toucan Sam. Hmm. You know what I mean? So you got like, like you walk on the beach and you got like stingrays that's just like floating by, like, you know what I mean? Um, that's crazy. It, it was just amazing, man. And and the other great part about it was I spent five years over there and um, the seasons are reversed because it's on the other side of the hemisphere. So oh, that's right. I went from summer to summer to summer. Oh to summer. my <laughs> God. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. You yeah. ain't never, you ain't see a snowflake in a minute. <laughs> man. That's why you kept going back. <laughs> yeah, I love it. There. I, brought, I brought my son out there with me. He went to school out there. Mm. Nice. You know what I mean? So that was that was pretty dope. All right. That's it's funny because I'm noticing you went from a, a crocodile team in Venezuela to a crocodile team in Australia. In Australia. <laughs> you know, I, didn't even put that together, I didn't even put that together. <laughs> <laughs> I just beat that right now. So that's funny. There's well, only yeah, so many you to be named sports. <laughs> right, of course. Everybody's a warrior after a while. <laughs> yep. All right, so go. you went uh all in, you went all NBL first team and got mm -hmm. all-star honors in there. You yeah. signed on a two-year deal after that. Yeah. Uh, and then it said you went to France for that yeah, pro A team. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. For that pro yeah. A team. Yeah. Okay. 0607, you were an all-star honoree and named it a second team. Mm -hmm. um, then they have you. Uh, all right. So in the same time frame, you played uh, in Syria. Yeah. So Syria. So what happened oh, high school, I ended up in Syria? Um, the it was after our season was over. Syria was still going. Okay. And so I was like, all right, I'll go. I, like the basketball was bullshit, but they paid you in oil. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so. That made it a good look, and um, that's that's where I was. So Syria, that was crazy because it's like it was like it's it's it was so much history there because it's supposed to be the birthplace of man. Um, so like, but so besides the basketball, like I got to like experience like um, like where the first man was, like where the, and like the, the they had like buildings that were still up from like you know from so far back and the doors were only about like four feet high. Cause I guess, you know, humans were that, that tall, like right, you know right, I mean? right, right, right. Um, the, the original first city is what they called it. And so mm -hmm. they still, it was still upright. Like you could still tour it or whatever. Um, but like, it, it, I mean, obviously like Syria, you know, shortly after I left, went through like, you know, some war and, and some difficult times, but I got to experience it before that. Right, and right, that's right. where I was when I left. I didn't go home, I went to Egypt. You know what I mean? Okay. And I, um, I, I spent some time in Egypt and, um, you know, just on my own, not even hooping over there. But I was like, I'm, I may never be this close again. Cause like right. you can literally see the, you can literally see it from Syria. You can see Egypt. You um, can see the pyramids, right? Yeah. Well, from like, you know how you can see like, um, i trying to think of an example. Like, um, it, it, you can see it like far off. You know what I mean? Like, like say you're driving into if the you're sea. On the shore. You the like, yeah, if, you're on the, if you're on the shore, like you can see it like, like that's Egypt over there. Okay. And okay. So I was like, all right, I gotta go. You, I gotta go. go. I'm right here. Right. There. Right. So right. I, over there and I stayed over there for a few, like for a while, and just toured Egypt. You know what I mean? And that's dope. like, that was incredible. That's dope. That's but, dope. Yeah, so Syria was dope. And I got a lot of money for a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the hey. Because <laughs> like, get it hey, we fit I, in. I, yo, that's one thing I hear about the Middle East. They, they get the yeah. bag out there. So oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's all that oil. They just got money. Like, you know what I mean? They were doing the same too. <laughs> okay. So from there, it shows me you sign a two D two year deal with, forgive me if I say it wrong, Carnes? Cairns. 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 Yeah, yeah, I yeah. bands. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, another team from it. out in Queensland. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, this Wikipedia is crazy. It says reportedly leaving the crocodiles for more money. Like yo, so. So what? this is the thing. So what was crazy? What happened was um, they they were rivals. Aha. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I took a lot of slack for that. Like oh, like I, I bet. You, like. like um, I like you, Brett Favre story. going to go play for the Vikings, like yo, right, you going, yeah, right? So, like, so that, so I, I was, I was a big deal for 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 Townsville, like you know what I mean, like you know what I mean, I, I, you know, they they weren't doing well when I got there, and we did well afterwards. I'm, you know, I made the All Star teams, and you know what I mean, I represented mm-hmm. them. And so this the um the the team president at the time, a jerk. So this is what he does. So it's time to talk, you know, my contract or whatever. And he says, Larry, this is all I got. And mind you, they're a small market. So, like, take, like, a, think about it like a Sacramento Kings, like, you know what I mean? Like, okay. compared to, like, a New York Knicks, like, they're a right. small market, right? right. Yeah. And you know, they had teams sure. in Melbourne that were big markets that had a lot of money. But this is a small market team. It was a community team. Like, it was a type right. of team where it's like, they, they, like, families came to the game. It wasn't like a corporate. Like, some teams were ran by corporate corporations. Right, right. right. Mm-hmm. This is run by families. And you, and you knew everybody. You got to meet everybody. Like, you know what I mean? And so, like, he was like, yo, this is what I have to offer you. This is all I got. And I'm kind of like, all right. And I know I can get more elsewhere. You know what I mean? My contract, I know I can go somewhere else. But I'm like, you know what, man? Like, um, all right, let me let me think about it. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to break the bank. I'm not trying to, like, make it so you can't bring other players in. Let me, let me think about it, right? Sure. Right. So while I'm thinking about it, I got teams offering me unprecedented, like, I didn't know Australia had this kind of money type of money, mm, right? Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. right. Yo. And so um, what happens, he gets wind of this, and he comes back, and he's like, all right, well, I'll offer you this. And I'm like, now I'm insulted because I'm like, hold up. Why you just offer me that the first From time? From the gate. From right. The gate, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm what I'm, what not not that you're a commodity. He wanted, oh, wait a minute, here's a little more. Like, yeah. Right. And so, like, I, and then, like, um, besides that, it was, you know, some players that I really got along with and that I really wanted to come back that I thought we could make a push for a, a, a deep playoff run that without, you know, without consulting me, like, I felt like, you know, I should have been a part of it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, he got rid of. and I'm like, I'm not starting from scratch, you know what I mean, with new guys. Like, you know, we, right. got, we got the chemistry, like, we went. To this point last year, I think we can go. And so he got rid of them. And, and so I, I took the more money. And okay. at that point, it made me the highest paid um, import, the highest paid American in the league. Oh, wow. So, okay. And so when that when my salary got out, then they, <laughs> they really came for me. I was, I was <laughs> not happy. I, bet, did. I know they did. Bro. I was man. not welcome in Towns. Hey, no, 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 no. Guy out of here. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> problems, out of good here. problems. Good problems. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, what they say? More money, more problems, right? Exactly. That's what it's a fact. Say. It's a so, fact. All right. So they they tell me in that year, uh, you were again an NBL All Star honoree. Is that mm-hmm. like uh making the all team or something, like an all NBL team? Is that what they it's, mean? It's, it's the same thing as um being an all star here in the States. Just being an all star, okay. Okay. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I see here it did say that you were second team in 07. And then yeah. first team so like all NBA, but all, like all NBA. NBA, all NBA. Okay, I just want to make okay. it clear that clear it up. Nice. Okay, so you made some big bread, but they said in December they couldn't pay you what they said. I'm guessing they couldn't afford you. It says fellow import Dave Thomas. Yeah, Michigan State. Yeah, or the head coach Alan yep. Black. Uh huh. <laughs> so did they? Oh, did they overpromise and underdeliver? Like. Yeah, so um what happened was the owner of the of the team owned all of the Lexus dealerships in okay. the, in the northeast in that area. Okay. And so I guess that's where he had issues with his situation. So okay. um it was either take less or keep it moving. So we end up settling. That was the following year. That was that was uh, the fo- the year after that. The second. Yeah. So you know what I mean. So okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, it says this one thing. I just want to know if you know about this and you can cl- yeah. like clarify. It says the team continued to play, but mm-hmm. only after the entire team agreed to a blanket 
45% pay cut for the rest of the season. And that's what I wasn't staying for. I was about to <laughs> okay. say, I was like, I wasn't okay. staying either. They wanted me to pay, to pay for half of what they promised. So. Okay. What? Because of what happened with his dealership. Right. With that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not my fault. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. So I'm not selling your cars. So, like <laughs> over there, you had uh, you were allowed a certain amount of imports, Americans, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously, that the Americans is the you know would drive the team. You know, what I mean, obviously, you have some really good Australians over there as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple years prior to that, they had um, beaten the U.S. in the in, in the Olympics in the okay. pre- prelims. Yes, 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 I remember that. Yeah. They had some yeah. really, really good Australians over there, but ultimately. People came to see the Americans. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And so um, when they couldn't pay us, then we left, and they um, they continued to play with just their their national team. Okay. Who took oh, over, who also okay. took yeah, with that big of a pay cut of, too of what they uh, yeah. That's that's tough. That's tough. We All right. Business so, of basketball, man. <laughs> Jeez, man. So it seems like it, it, it like a month later, you're you're headed to the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Um, so December another 11th, Euro that Cup happened. Team. Another Euro Cup team. You had to the Eiffel Towers, then Bosch. Did I say that right? Yep. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> for the rest that, of that bro. season. You're hey, I'm trying to get it out. All right, so you play, and that is a team in the the Dutch league, right? It was the team yep. from the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. Okay, so talk to me about that experience too, because I'd love to. I don't hear about Dutch basketball. So that was great, but, man. Because again, but, it was one of those experiences where, like. You play um, a regular season um, against the teams in that league, which you know also had really good competition. But during your cup games, now you're traveling all over Europe again. You know what I mean? Okay. So now you're okay. all over Europe, so you're playing in Germany. You know what I mean? You're playing in um, in France. You're playing in all these different uh, different places. And so, I mean, again, an amazing experience. And I think we won uh, we won the cup. Um, for the regular season, we didn't win the whole thing, but we won the cup for the regular season there. Yep. Okay, and so that was a really big deal because like we were really celebrated. But um, again, another another place that was that was incredible. Um, right. I was only like you know forty five minutes outside of Amsterdam, so got to experience Ooh, Amsterdam. You know what I mean, um, nice. Yes, I got my you know I got my boys to come out and hang out in, in Amsterdam and ex- ex- explore Amsterdam and all this beautiful. Uh, <laughs> the red sites, lights, the red sites the of <laughs> course, the offer, so. of course. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. yeah, that was a lot incredible. of a lot of things in that country are legal that are not legal in every state here. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it was before <laughs> time, way yeah. before, way ahead yeah, of his time, before. Yeah. way before. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's a fact. Okay. So. So that's mm-hmm. so that's fire. Shout out to that. Shout out to the Netherlands for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dutch Cup <laughs> title, DBL All Star for that league as well. Uh huh. Nice. Um. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then we, we in that summer, who they tested me. We had in Argentina, Ciclista <laughs> Olimpico. Yeah. You got it? Is that you did good? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You got it. So I didn't. I didn't stay okay, there. Okay. So you played out there. Like, I didn't stay there long. I got there. And for whatever reason, I, I don't know who brought me there, but the coach did not want me there. Like huh. <laughs> that sounds like the last journey episode we did. Right. With Doug. Yeah, someone Doug had a ta- he went somewhere and, he and he's like, like the coach didn't want me there. Yeah, it, man, this, I this, forgot this, what country he went to, but he was not he didn't play. He never right. played. He stayed on the bench the entire time. So the entire go ahead, time. my fault to cut you off. Yep. Yeah, like this dude didn't want me to play. Like, and I'm clearly like I'm get I'm I'm averaging like 12 points in eight minutes. Like I'm clearly <laughs> like the better I do, the faster you took me out. Like right, I right, right, right. Was, he so, definitely didn't want you, bro. Yeah, it was, like, it, was, it was incredible. So I called my agent, like get me up out of there. And I think I went to Estudiantes after that. Estudiantes de Bahia Blanca. Yeah, Ooh, I feel like I knocked did. that out yeah. the park right there. <laughs> yeah, you, you did. That was fire. <laughs> so, so, I finished, so I finished the season there. I had a, I had a, had a good year there. And then, uh, nice. okay. And I think went back the following year, I went. I liked Argentina, man. It was beautiful down there. Um, I went to like the the bottom of like as close as you can get to Antarctica oh, as wow. you can possibly get in Rivadavia. Wow. wow. At the bottom of Argentina, so like Argentina. Wait, opened, what was the weather like there? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was normal. Like it was, it was windy some days. Like it was, it was normal weather. Oh, but, okay, okay. Yeah, as close as you can get to Art to, to Antarctica. And I've been on every continent. I like I've lived on every continent. I've experienced every continent except for Antarctica. Right. But, uh, you were I, close. I, you were I, close. I, close. <laughs> I say, I say, ain't nothing out there for us anyway. 
Right, right, right. <laughs> Unless you're ready to be in negative weather, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, facts, facts. Um, okay, so where am I at? All right, we in Argentina. Uh, let's see, 2010, who Halcones, Rojos, Veracruz in Mexico. Mexico, Mexico yeah. yeah. That was you awesome. weren't there long. You were there for nah, about, it says you were there about eight games. Yeah, I went out there and got hurt. But uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, they play not, rough out there, right? It's different hoops out there. Well, right? the whole South America, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so, like the whole South America is kind of like, especially down in the post, like it's a wrestling match, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, but um, I went out there and got uh, I went out there and got hurt, but um, um, it was still a good experience. I, I, I stayed out there, even though I wasn't playing, I stayed out there to rehab and stuff out there. Okay, but okay, I had a good experience out there. But. How was how was uh, um the medical uh, treatment out there. That's what I'd like to know. How was the and, treatment out there when you were out of Mexico? As opposed I mean, in, some to places, in some places, it's better than others. Mexico was good. Like Mexico was like, um, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people, like they think, um, like obviously these teams got money, you know what I mean? So they got the best doctors, right. you know what I mean? They yeah. got the best the best facilities. Um, and, it, and it's kind of fucked up because you'll go to some of these places and you see like the people, um, it was like that in the Dominican Republic. Like, I lived in like this really nice hotel, and it was like equivalent to like a Four Seasons, like a you know what I mean. And right across the street from me, people were living in like ten huts. You know what I mean? Right, 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 um, right, 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 right. And it was it was kind of fucked up. Like you kind of feel guilty walking out in the morning and stretch. You know what I mean? Right, <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Your, your, your bathroom got gold um, faucets and shit. And my right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so like you know. We had, we always had the best of whatever you needed. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Um, whether it be doctors or you know medical, you know attention or whatever. Okay. But like in, in some of these countries, it, it wasn't always like that. Um, okay. Matter of fact, and, and uh, when I was in Dominican, I had this little kid who, uh, you know, he, he didn't speak any English, and at the time, I didn't speak any Spanish. But uh, I think I gave him like ten dollars one time to go to the store for me, like. And so every morning he was sitting outside of my, my what's the name, my waiting for you. Waiting for me, right? So we became friends. But I, I don't we still never spoke, but like he'd come to my room, play we play PlayStation together. Nice. Like, shoot him 10 bucks or whatever, like you know what I mean? And 10 bucks, like for him, probably fed his family for a week. You Went know what I mean? A long way, yeah. right? Yeah, man. And you know what I mean? So I just had him like just running little errands for me, like, you know what I mean? Go get me this, go get me that. And like I, you know, tip him or whatever, man. Right, right. And uh I remember, like, you know, when I left, he cried. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, but, man. You know, I almost okay. cried too, man. But, like, again, like you said, like, we always had the best, man. But, like, in some of these countries, not everybody did. Right, right. Right. And I and I bet you made that kid's, you made that kid's day every time he saw you. Yeah. Right. That's good. Now, he probably still talks about you to this day. But, like, listen, man, day, right. I'm a pro he's player. A grown, he's, a grown somewhere. he's a grown man somewhere, man. I hope, I hope he's doing all right. Yeah. Right, man. Right. So, shout out to him for sure. All right, so we 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 leave in Mexico. Uh, you're headed to the Ukraine. Ooh. Ukrainian Basketball Super League to play for BC Kimik. Kimik? Yeah, Kimik? yeah, yeah. Is what Ukraine I'm was, uh, I, I went from Ukraine to Odessa. Like, um, now I'm hurt. I'm playing. Um, now I got plantar fasciitis. Ooh, and, um, Whoa, that's rough. rough. And I'm and I'm I'm trying to play through it. Yeah, you know I mean, but um. Ukraine was great. Like Ukraine was, it was cold. It was Eastern Europe. It was yep. like everything was gray. I'm over there in the dead of winter. Like, like you had to like really put on like the whole like yeah ski like yep. scarf over your face. Yep. Like New York yep. is cold. Like I don't, I don't like cold weather. Like I'm not right. a cold like, over there. It was like. Like, I don't want to leave my apartment. Like, right, <laughs> facts, facts. But yeah, you know I mean, again, they're crazy for their sports over there. Um, but like, yeah, Ukraine. I, I, I went. I went from over there. Um, went to Odessa, played a few games over there, and then I came back. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what I see here. It showed. It, show, it showed you had a quick stint um, with Gimnasia y Esgrima in Argentina. Yeah. And then it says mm -hmm. you left in November. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you did, you got to try out for Odessa as well. Yeah. Okay. So that'll wrap that. So from what I'm seeing here, you bounced around a lot in your early years and you settled in, in Australia, you kind of had yeah. a good tenure in Australia. 
Then mm-hmm. a little bit after that Australia tent, you kind of bounced around between Europe and Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Um, looks like a year was taken off. Was that for you to rehab, my guess? Yep. Rehab my okay. rehab my foot, you know what I mean? Rest it up. And at this time, I'm thinking about shutting it down. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking okay. about I'm thinking and, and I'm still super um in great shape or whatever, but I'm thinking about that. Um I'm thinking about that transition. You know what I mean? Because now what's I'm, next? Right. Yeah, what's now next? I'm in my 30s and I never had a job. You know what I mean? And mm, although right. I, and although I've you know I've made quite a bit of money, it's not Kobe money, like it's not. Like never work again, money. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. This is, what, this is what a lot of people think. They think you play, you play professional basketball, you set for life. But I didn't. Like it wasn't. No, that. no, no. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you after after that documentary, that thirty for thirty broke. Yeah, yeah. And anything can happen, even Eye if you're opening, making millions bro. of dollars, yep. man. So no, absolutely, I, and you know, what I mean, you're, you're especially like you know when you're not taught, you don't come from an environment where you're taught how to how to take care of it, how to spend it, what credit it is, or and you're, and you're 18, sometimes 18, 17 years old, and you yeah, and you're exactly. No, absolutely, no. and absolutely, absolutely. I had I had ran through my money a a, a few times before. Yeah. You know, what I mean, I was fortunate to make it back. You know what I mean? Um, but um, you know, even that last even that last time I went back over, like I think I went back over like two or three more times and. Uh, like some of it was for love, but it was always like, you know, I'm starting to look for work, but I'm like, uh, let me give one more check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm so, like, yo, I so, can still go. Yeah, yeah. Right, I, yeah, I can still get in. Because yeah, so, 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 although, like, I'm like, I, now at this point, I got, I got two kids, and you know, one in high school, one in middle school, or whatever, and so now I'm leaving them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, for long periods of time, and so. My oldest son, like he'd been in, through it the entire time. So when it's time for me to go overseas, I'm um, he had even been with me a couple of times. But when it's time to go, he's like, "Peace, bring me back some nights." Yeah. But my, my my youngest son at the time, you know, what I mean, who's who's 19 now, right. like he's around like seven, eight, nine years old, nine years old at the time. Now he's like, "You said you wasn't gonna go no more." Oh, like you know, what I mean? man. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? right like, there, yep. The last, you know what I mean? So it's like now it's getting harder and harder to leave. Like, you know, right. Um, so man, okay. heart wrenching. Yeah, for real. All right. So, <laughs> you, so you so you do one last stint in the NBL. Um, well, I went to New Zealand first. Yeah, that's right. I've seen here Southland yeah. Southland yeah. Sharks in 2012. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. is that a different NBL? Because what the way it shows on Wikipedia, it says New Zealand NBL season. Yeah, so that's different. That's New Zealand. It's his own. It, there's a there's an NBL team in New Zealand. Okay, but there's also a whole other league in New Zealand. Aha, uh-huh, because okay. it's an island off the coast, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Okay. Yeah, off okay. of Australia. So okay. that was his own league, and it's a little bit less competitive than what I had done. But again, they they you know what I mean. And I had said no to them a bunch of times, and they just kept up in the bread. <laughs> oh okay. So like, yeah. Back yep. <laughs> at the time was like, all right, go get it. And sure. Like, oh, <laughs> Why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So then <clears throat> you head back to Townsville mm-hmm. in October of that same year. Yeah. Uh to sign on for the 12 13 season. The um, yeah. Yep. And cool. then in November, a month and a half later, uh, you had to announce your retirement. So according to this, who discovered a small hole in your thigh bone. Yeah, so where my knee and my thigh meet. Um, oh. and, it, and it was something that like I could have recovered from, but again, it was it was it was three, four month recovery period. Okay. And so at this point, I'm I'm done. Like right, you know right, I mean? right, yeah. You, you've seen the <laughs> world. So at this yeah. point, okay, at this point you are uh let's see, 2012. Am I doing my math right? I'm like you're 34, 35, 34, 35, 35 years old. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And then, and, right. And that in that day and age, you're old in the league. You're you're right, an old right, guy. Right. So, so absolutely. I'm playing with guys calling me Unc. You know what I mean? I'm right. right, right <laughs> I'll right, be right, goddamn. Right. You don't That's don't crazy, call me that. Yo. Don't make me dunk <laughs> on you. Like okay. Don't call me Unc. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like at this point, like, you know what I mean? I am still competitive, but I'm like, you know what? Like I'm not finna go through this rehab thing with my kids sit down. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I'm man. Like, you know what I mean, appreciate the opportunity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get ahead on and shut it down. So, so right. now, now, just to wrap this part up, I just have to ask that question before we jump into what happened afterwards. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'm sure that goes back to DSP on that one. Yeah, I, I'll take care of that. So, <laughs> um, 
Now you just said you you packed it. You know you don't want to be overseas away from your children yeah. while you're trying to rehab. Now let's say you're in the same situation, but instead of playing for the Towsville Crocodiles, you're playing for you know the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Do you think you'd still be like, all right, let's rehab this and let's give this another shot since I'm in the states and I'm near my children? Or would you be like the same idea? You know, just the hindsight kind of kind of question, you know? Well, I see it all the time, man. Like, you know, regardless of where you are, like it's it's um, you know, you get to a certain age and you have other responsibilities. Um, it get becomes <clears throat> difficult no matter where you are. Like I see it all the time with guys right now in the league, mm -hmm. who, you know, have an opportunity to play. Um, but they're away from their families. Cause like, even as a coach, like coach player, what have you, you you're in this game. Like right now I'm in Cleveland. You know what I mean? My mm. family's back in, in LA. You know what I mean? Right. I'm, an 11, I'm on an 11 game road trip. I'm on an 11 day road trip. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. And so it comes to a point. It's like, what's important to you? You know what I mean? Um, and you know, Fortunately, I, I I didn't have any daughters, but I couldn't imagine being away from my daughters. You know what I mean for that mm -hmm. time. But like, I've mean, got a six year old man, and yep. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. You know, and I have a, I, have a I nine don't ever want to be away from her. So. Yeah, exactly. I have a nine and six and nine and six year old boys. You know what I mean? Um, you know, luckily my wife is an amazing mom and, and does a great job taking care of them and makes me feel good about you know what I do and supportive you know while I'm away. But um. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, like even yeah. if you're in, even if I'm in Charlotte, like you know what I mean, I'm questioning this now. You know what I mean? It depends on, you know, yeah, like yeah. what the financial situation is. Like you know what I mean? Like do I need to be here? Like you know what I mean? And then yeah. on the flip side, there's you know I got friends and I and I see also who guys who can't put it down. Like dude, it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, it's over. Yeah. Like yeah. let it go. Back like, it up. Stop right. trying to chase this like it's it's That's a fact. Rap, like, you know what I mean? Yep. They, they 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 it's all they've known. Like you know what I mean? Like if you think about this, think about just this 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 interview. Like this story started at 15 years old, and now we're right. talking about 35 years old. Like you know what I mean? Right. And it's all been basketball. You know what I mean? Yep. And so it's like right. Um, that idea of like even after college, like I remember my last game in college. I remember thinking like, yo, what the fuck is next? Like you know what I right. mean? Like that's right. really so imagine being 35 and like having to go back. Like, I mean, obviously, I'll never, I'm not trying to compare to being incarcerated. Obviously, I've been blessed and it's nothing like being incarcerated, but imagine coming out to the real world right. and having just to like adapt. You know adapt. Right, right. And like, and, and, and getting into it, like, this is a great transition into what I did next is when I came back, like, I went back to Fresno. I, you know, I, I had owned some homes in Fresno and, you know, I went back in the, into Fresno in the summers to work out, and you know, before I would go back overseas, and all these boosters and all these businessmen that I that I that I would interact with and go to lunch with and have dinners with, they'd all say like, "Larry, yo, when you come back, you know, give me a call." Da, 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 da. So I'm thinking when I'm done playing, I'm gonna go back to Fresno, have a ticker tape parade, and pick whatever job I want. And it didn't happen that way. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like the plan that I had for myself, I was like, all right. I can go into college coaching. I can go into high school coaching. Um, that's not what I want to do. I really want to challenge myself and see, am I capable of doing something besides basketball? Like, you know what I mean? I know I can do this. Like, I, I can even transition into coaching. I know I can do this. Um, but what else am I, What else is out there? What else can I do? And I had some yeah. friends who had some success in uh, pharmaceutical sales. You know what I mean? Who had, okay. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. Like, there's no way I had ADD coming up. I was a special ed to ninth grade. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> there was no way I was going to be able to sit behind a desk. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I really knew that. So right. I was like, sales, pharmaceutical sales. Like, sure. I, can get out, I can talk to people and they're making Talk things. to people, yeah. This, this is like when uh, like the pharmaceutical salesmen were like caking. Like, you know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. I, Yo, I can do that. I'd love to. I'm, I'm on a road, but I get to come home. Like, you know what I mean? And so that was yep. my plan. Yep. And so, um, when I got home, no one would hire me because I had no experience. It's like, mm. love to, you need some experience. And I'm like, yep. yo, somebody give me some experience. Right, <laughs> so right, right. Experience. That's right. <laughs> yep. I hate and that so circle. I, huh? You're not good enough, but. And so what I ended up Keep doing, working at it. You, <laughs> what like, I what? ended up doing is I ended up, you know, <laughs> because, um, because it's what I know, number one, because I love the game and love to give back. I ended up starting consulting for all the high schools in Fresno area. And I ended up starting my own um, 
I ended up taking over a friend's AAU team and I ended up starting my own um, like development uh, thing, right? It was okay. Chaos basketball. And so I would develop kids, um, player development for kids, right? And I met a dad and the dad was like, you know, I was, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to get into sales, but you know, I don't have any experience. And he was a lawyer for the Yellow Pages, like oh, wow. phone book, right? Right, yeah. He was like, Larry, come on over, come on over. And I, um, it's not, it's not a glamorous job, you know what I mean? But you know, you can, I, 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 you can, you can get some experience there. It's, it's selling the ads. Right, right. And I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. So mind you, I'm googling these businesses how to get to where I'm going on Google, but I'm telling them they that you need you need print. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> you know, about like turning a no into a yes, like hearing no first all the time, like trying to go into these businesses and tell them that you need print while I'm Googling how to get to you, but you need print. Right, 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 right. So um, that was a great experience. I've never been told no so much in my life. Oh my God. But the experience was like, un, like unprecedented. You know what I mean? Um, because I learned to be a salesman. I learned to talk to every type of person. Um, right. I learned to cold call. Yep. And what I ended up doing from there is I ended up selling a guy Yellow Page as I sold solar. And he was like, yo, if you can sell me this shit, then you can sell me solar. You can sell my right. solar. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. And so this is uh this is 2014, 15. This is like California where the sun is shining all day. All yeah. So right. it's selling itself. Like, you know what I mean? This is the, pretty much. And so I go into that and yeah, like, they're they're coming to my they're coming to me now with Massachusetts. They're coming to me now with that solar stuff. Yeah, yeah so like, here. I don't need that. <laughs> but and it, and it actually works, and all you have to do is be able to articulate how it works. You know what right. I mean? Because it's it's mm -hmm. not like you're trying to sell somebody uh, a vacuum or you know what I mean? Like you you're actually really helping people. Like you're really right. cutting down their mm -hmm. electricity. Like you know what I mean? You all, all you have to do is articulate how it works, and it sold itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I did that for a while, and then I end up um, running into an old booster who was like um, in charge of like North America for uh, Pepsi Frito Lay. And so he was like, yo, mm. I'm selling these chips. You know what I mean? So I did that. Okay. I went back to school, got my master's degree. Um, I went back to Fresno, got my master's. And I, I sold the chips for a while. And I was killing it because I'm going into these supermarkets. And it's in Fresno and surrounding areas. So all they want to do is talk about basketball. and talk right. <laughs> So we sit down for an hour, talk about Tark. And now I got chips all around the perimeter of the store. <laughs> like yep. they're taking everything. Yep. Out. They're like, listen, we'll buy whatever <laughs> you want. Talk to me yeah, about Tark. Yeah, What's yeah, up with the right, town? Right, right. <laughs> right. That's all right. they want to hear. Talk to me about the 35 rebounds. Like, you know what I mean? Right. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna need a display here and then we can talk about it. They're like, yeah, yeah, put it up. Sure, they're like, sure. We'll take it. <laughs> sure, whatever you want. Right? So that may um, I love it. So I'm I'm having great success in sales. I got my master's degree, like I'm I'm killing it, right? And then I get a call and um, mind you, I'm back up. I'm now making a comfortable six figures. I got the, the, the BMW 750 LI, I got the corner office. Chilling. I'm doing great, right? Mm, mm. Comfortable six figures. I get a phone call and it's, remember the guy I told you in college that worked with me to help me get my skill set right? Welsh, mm. right? Something John like that? Welsh. Yeah. Great memory. Welsh, yep. He's been in the league for 20 years. He went to the league as soon as I left, right? He's, he's been a... Uh, He's been on Jason. He start, he's been on Jason Kidd's bench. He was in, with Milwaukee. He was with uh, with Carl up in uh, Seattle. I mean, uh, in Denver with Carmelo Anthony. And those yeah. guys. He's been he's well known player development coach in the league. Right. The ever. <clears throat> now he's with the Clippers. He called me and says, "Larry, I'm getting a little bit older. I need I need some support. Can you help me out?" I'm wow. like, "It's the league. Yeah, hell yeah. Like you know what I mean? I wow. like him, man. He's like, but this is the thing." I got to hire you as an intern. It's forty grand. Mm. Come on! Mm. <laughs> Yikes! He said, "Hey, hey, come on to the NBA for a lot less money you making already." Uh, already, right? I'm like, oh, hey. I'm like my, I don't know. my wife just got a job as the AD at a, at a prestigious high school in Fresno, so she's like, "I'm not going." Like, <laughs> so I'm like, "Man, what do I do?" Whatever. You know what I mean, I talked to my oldest son about it. He's like, listen, man, you can always come back to this. Like, you know what I mean? If you don't try it, you'll be kicking yourself. And so I was right. like, all right, yeah, man, right. uh, I, I let go of Frito-Lay and I'm in my sixth season with the LA Clippers. 
Now, let, that now, I got. I have to ask you because I have to go back to the story where you were a professional. You mm-hmm. said when you were overseas, those first few years you were upset. Yeah, you weren't happy that you were playing overseas mm-hmm. until you ch- changed your mindset and yeah. said, you know what, overseas guy, I'm getting this bag. Yeah. So now I'm getting this sitting money, at home. Right. You're getting this phone call from your development coach yeah. about to tell you, yo, I have this opportunity for you in this league that kept evading <laughs> you your younger year. How did that feel, bro? Yo, I mean, it was, it was right. so crazy. Like, I'm Googling. What, what I did was, like, I'm Googling. When I first got the call, like, we didn't talk about salary or anything, right? We're talking about the opportunity and, you know what I mean? And... I get off the phone with him and I'm mad happy about it because I'm Googling. I'm like, okay, what do a player development coach make? You know what I mean? And I'm looking up his salary and it's really, really good. So I'm like, if he's making this, I'm all right. I'm going to be all right here. It, right. Was the, it, was, mm-hmm. it was the internship part that really like, yo, I can't catch a break. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. This league right. is it's, not It's like they kept not- dangling the carrot in front of you. <laughs> yeah, man. It's not, it's not for me, man, but uh, – but nah, it's, it's it's great, man. I, I earned my stripes, and um, like I'm associate head coach of our G League team now. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Hopefully, be the head coach soon, and then um, on onto the bench, man. So nice. my goal is to be uh, a head coach in the NBA, right? Okay. And it sounds even like it is. It, it sounds even crazier than trying to be a player because there's 450 players in the NBA, right? There's only 30 coaches. Right. Right. Coaches, but one thing I've learned, one thing I've learned, um, and you know, pretty much all this conversation, I never broke down this conversation like this. By the way, that's this is dope. Like I never went nice. and talked about. I it. Appreciate I like you, brother. Appreciate you. But um, sure. I really, I really enjoyed it. But one thing I learned on this was like it's about the journey. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna shoot to be an NBA head coach, and whether I end up being a head coach or not. The journey on the way there is going to be incredible. Has been so yeah. far, and yeah, so far yeah. to, to be like incredible, like that, you know. And the difference is, is like my body's not going to get too tired for it. You know, what I mean, it's not going to run out. You know, what I mean, right. so as long as I want to be on this journey until I find a new one, you know, what I mean, or until if this is my last journey, then it's going to be an incredible journey. And so sure I'm is, to, I wake up, I wake up like a, like I never wake up like fuck like today like I wake up like what's what's today let's, let's get next. to it right. let's I mean, get right. to it so like I'm 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 blessed in that way man like God bless a child who knows what he wants you know what I mean because mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. the purpose you know what I mean that's so a fact. I'm blessed right. to have that purpose that's a fact um, Bravo you got any questions so you know me I always feel like everybody has a certain theme to their story like you know yep. With Baby Shaq, it was like him not having the knowledge Enough of understanding right. and getting the information. With Doug, it always seemed to be politics. Yeah. I feel like with Larry, I feel like with Larry, it, 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 it's his mindset. It was yes. your mindset. You positive. You yeah. always remain positive, even though, just like you mentioned, uh, DSP, how he didn't want to rock. He didn't want to play. You don't want to yeah, play yeah. out overseas. Like, why am I right. out here? But to be like, you know what? Change my mindset. I'm gonna stay positive. Look at the good things. And it's carrying over to now where to you now. were associate head coach right. and your goal is to be a head coach. And and like you said, I mean, you chose, you're 45 years old now. Yeah. I, the coaches are this young in the league now. I mean, what's, right. what's the Celtics coach? He's in his he's in his 30s. Am I not? 30s, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's in his early 30s. So you can you can do this coaching thing forever. You can coach yeah, to the 85. Years, bro. He can, he can coach right. to these 95. He, he could be My knee's not gonna give out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you ain't gonna blow your knee out coaching unless you know you like that. What was that coach from uh, Last Chance You? He's super animated. The, oh. the head coach. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ball headed dude. Yeah, yeah, I can't he really, yeah. He's all over. He might blow a knee out, but you. Yeah, he, he that's the fact. So again, it's another story I love to hear. It's just. I love it because it's somebody that I we grew up with, like grew up watching, grew up playing. You know what grew I mean? Playing, so it's right. like it's fire to hear this story. So I appreciate you coming on, man. This, this yeah, for dope. real, man. Truly appreciate you. And of course, you're from really around the way. You know what I mean? We, we had to have you on here, man. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate Truly it. appreciate you, Larry, man. If there's anyone you want to shout out or anything like that, you can do so now, my brother. Man, I shout you guys out, man. Just keep putting on for Rockland, man. Never tuck your town. You know, appreciate right? that. Like, appreciate uh, that. Keep doing it, man. Like, keep highlighting this. 
amazing people that come out of Rockland, man. Keep highlighting them, man, and 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 get your get your get your platform bigger, man, so everybody can know. That's a, that's a fact. Yeah, man, I truly appreciate you, Larry. Hopefully, with this interview, we can get some eyes and ears, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> truly appreciate you, bro, for Thank real. Yeah, man, you be All safe, brother. All right, Absolutely. good luck the rest of the season, too, my man. Appreciate yeah, good you. Good luck, for real. All right, brother. We'll Thanks, be watching, for sure. All right, man. <laughs>